So you may be asking yourself, Black Knight, why have you come to the Sonora Freeway? To race a custom Frankenstein? Is it just a Halloween kind of oddity? No, no, it is not. Now this one, I have two custom Frankensteins. As you can see, this one's a little more uh, revved up than this one is. We're going to take the slower one. And uh, you can see in a minute where I'm going with this. I decide I need a baseline here. I need a baseline for a Halloween car that really doesn't handle very well. But sounds nice and looks cool. Perhaps you've already guessed where I'm going with this, or perhaps you've even read the title of the video. But we're going to run this puppy against the Tornado Rat Rod and see how it works out. Now again, I think I've made some improvements on this car. But it is strictly a looker, i got to tell you. Now, the acceleration is not bad. Um, it's really kind of a lot like the Sun, because it's all... All acceleration, no handling and brakes. That's the, the kind of thing you got going there. Watch this. You're trying to turn around here. And, all right, we didn't have enough speed going there, really. So let's cut the corners this way. And that's what you can expect to have happen periodically. All right, we're going to live with that. That will, those kind of things will make up for whatever improvements I've made to the car. As we zip this puppy around. Get a little history on this, uh, the Frankenstein. Last Halloween, I actually, in complete panic, bought two Frankensteins, because I wanted them to be different colors, and a Lurcher. I don't regret the purchases except for the fact that if I simply saved my money up I could have got them this year so there was no need to panic. But I think that the same is going to be true with the Sanctus. If not, I'm not really going to miss it. That's a little over the top even for me, you know. Whoa! See? Whoa! See, it's a little slippy. It's a slippy car. This is really... I mean, honestly, the only reason to get this is because it is so much the, uh... <laughs> the Munster coach. You could, dirt, dirt, yeah. you could dress yourself up like Herman Munster. You can do probably about as well as Herman Munster could here. It just loves to spin and spin. Now, as a point of reference, a really good time on this track is right around two minutes. Now that's your that's your supercar realm there, your super bike realm. It's in the two minute realm. The top muscle car, which is the custom Saber Turbo, pulls it in right around 204, 205. And this puppy coming in a little slower than that. And I know you're saying, alright, well that was great for the Halloween vibe and the, the spinning around, but uh, what's your point here? I'm glad you asked, because you see, there's another car released in the Halloweenish kind of time frame that we need to test. And I can think of no better way of testing it than setting that baseline in the, in the 240s there, 242 or whatever it was. Let's see. And see how this car comes up against it. Yes, I am talking about none other than the Tornado Rat Rod. Yes, we're going to run that sucker. Sports Classics. We want the same time of day. We want the same weather. We want no traffic. And we want a different car. Okay, we're going here. Let's go this way. That's the Tornado Rat Rod. Let's see. Normal race yellow. I don't know if that's the look for this car. That's kind of nice. I kind of dig that. That's you know, the, the straight up blue. You get your greens, racing green. Ooh. That kind of, this bronze kind of gives it a nice look. Not too many colors. Light blue. Like the, the light blue kind of how I imagine the car. So we'll go with light blue. I'm going to eventually buy one. Probably get in light blue. You will notice that it's got a very similar engine dynamic to the, uh, the Frankenstein. 
Everyone goes on that the, the pulleys are spinning. They spin on the Frankenstein as well. And let's see. Now, initial impression. That felt about as quick as it done very Regina. Now, we'll see what if it eventually gets to some kind of reasonable performance. I mean, let's talk off some positive points on the car here. It is very good looking. I really laid on the brakes there hard to make that turn. It is a rat rod. They look really cute. They look awesome. But will this thing run? Will it run quickly? It's actually handling a good bit better than the Frankenstein. Which, the tail is just all over the place on that thing. On the flip side, I don't know if it's not going faster when it's sliding. We're going to have to see. I mean, if this does reasonably well, we'll have to compare it to a Sterling GT just to see if... Uh, or something else that's quick. The Z-Type. That really wasn't too bad there. I have a feeling it's going to smoke the uh, Frankenstein. Which is not something I expected. A little bit better than you would think. Again, it's got a really... I mean, you really have to kind of plan for turns. It doesn't like to turn. It doesn't like to turn at all. That's... Saying it pushes is one thing. It just doesn't turn. It's not even pushing. It's not sliding. It's just got the widest turning radius you've ever seen. Not something you want to run on a tight course. No, no. That's not, not a good idea. Flat out, I don't know what we're running right now. Let's see. We're doing like around 100. So 100, that's what it'll max out at. Right around 100 miles an hour. Still, 233 better than the Frankenstein, which it probably could have beaten best if they may have done the same thing if I hadn't spun it out several times. Still not a blazing fast set of wheels. You're buying these for looks, basically, folks. 230 is a lot slower than a lot of cars. Now you can say, well, what about other sports classics? Let's see what else we can do. I think one more run here to, to illustrate what we're looking at here, where it, it resides in the field. Come on. All right, let's do the time warp again. Okay, first of all, you can see there, from this angle, pretty much the same motor. It's a lot cleaner here on the Albany. But it's very similar. You can see, I don't know, I kicked it right. You can see the belts are spinning right there, too. So there's a lot of detail there. What can we get? Can we get ourselves... You know, a Coquette Classic wouldn't be bad. A Casco, the JB700, a Mamba wouldn't be a bad comparison. The Monroe's a good one. Galley, the Roosevelt, the Stinger, the Sterling GT. That's what we want. We want the Sterling GT. I was going to switch it to a nice silver, but that's pretty. It's such a pretty baby blue. We'll just leave that as it is. Now. Let's compare the Sterling GT, which is the acknowledged race winner in this class. I like the 42 in the license plate to good omen, and then we're off. Zooming along. You already get a sense that we're pulling a much higher top speed here. I just switch quickly, but we get, we're coming up on this turn, so I don't want to lose concentration. First time I ever drove the Sterling right here. First time behind the wheel, so be patient with me. I'm not taking it to its fullest extent of its performance. I think we'll get a good idea, one way or another.
Also, forgive me if I put it in the bushes by overcooking it because I expect too much of it. We're gonna try to avoid that. I think we're making pretty good time here. The Sterling supposedly crushes everything except the Z-Type. It beats the Z-Type if there's a lot of turns. The Z-Type can take it, probably on an open course like this. Because that's got the higher top speed, supposedly, but we're just going to break here. I probably could have braked a little later there. This, the handling on this car is very good. Oh, those Germans. Not bad at all. Now this is a nice car. I have to get, might have to get myself one of these at some point. Whee! And yeah, this is not to prove that the Sterling GT is the fastest. That could be another video. This is just to show how does the Tornado Rat Rod compare to other cars in its class. Again, that was a 233, folks. Compared to a 216 or so, though, that's 16 seconds slower on this course than the fastest car. So this is not a race car. This is not a car you want to take out to the track. This is a car that you want to look cool with, okay? That's the turning. Well, you can look cool with that, too, but... If you're into the whole rat rod kind of thing, I mean, I'm going to probably buy one. I think they're cool. They're only $365,000, which sounds like a lot unless you know this game. Uh, I wonder if we could run it against a regular tornado just to see how that does. Because they say it's faster than a regular tornado. We have the tornado custom. I think I left traffic on, so that's going to affect things. Yeah, I left early. I did that. I hustled it a little too quick. But let's see how we do. Not feeling a lot of quickness here. Now, this custom obviously this has been the Benny Slammed one. Yeah, here comes some traffic. So, this won't be as scientific. Whoa! But that's scientific, and that was just awful. <coughs> Excuse me, why? I couldn't reach the mute button in time. I was too busy crashing. So here we are with the Slam Daddy of a Custom. Which has a nice sound to it, and it does look cool, except for the fact that I've completely sideswiped it. And I think we can definitely say, even by now, that the uh, the Rat Rod handles better. And it goes a little faster, I would think. And the traffic's not too bad to deal with, as long as we don't get broadsided there. Or where, where we hit somebody. That's going to slow things down. Or we, we can kill that guy. That's going to slow things down. Again, not as scientific this time around. I can tell you, with just the feel of the car, it's much more slippery. Not nearly as planted, well planted as the other car. Let's see how it does here. This is... Split the uprights. Alright, that wasn't too bad. If you brake early enough and get the speed down... It's gonna be funny when, after all of this, the Frankenstange is the slowest one. By the way, the Frankenstein's not a fast car as far as handling and all that concerned. I, that wasn't the claim coming in. This car does not... Oh, that's... Look at that. Right into a telephone pole. 
It's the pre-done hours. This is like someone coming home drunk. Just sliding the telephone pole. I'm fine. We'll just keep going. There's no problem with my driving. I just just get home, whatever that is. So we'll see here now. We're not with, we're already slower than the uh, Frankenstein. So this is, even with its problems, not a fast car. No, no. So if you want a tornado, yeah, or a tornado, or tornadini, or however you want to call it, it's so the Rat Rod's probably the fastest of the the. Uh, the 57 Chevy lookalikes. But not a still no, not a fast car. So there's your verdict, folks. If you if you like the look of the car, you like the styling on it, you know, it doesn't have a lot of customization, but it does it's kinda of heavily customized in and of itself. You know, you could you could do a lot more with this one as far as slamming it out and making it crazy. But uh if you want a rat rod, get a rat rod. Nothing wrong with a rat rod, except for the fact that if you want to race a rat rod, you'd better be racing other rat rods, because this isn't going to go well. And they kind of admit as much here in the description. Here he is. The Class A Tornado Rat Rod. $378,000. It was cheaper than that. That's a little bit. But who can say when the innovative hot rod designs of the 30s and 40s Shaded into the grungy rat rod counterculture of subsequent decades. And who can say when that genre was overrun by mediocre welders with endless disposable income, mutilating good cars, and jacking off to their own edginess in the back seat? That's really vivid, Rockstar. Thank you for, uh, thanks for that. What we can say is that this beauty comes with the moist towel as standard. Oh, that's just... Yeah. So they're... Even they don't respect it. You know, it's just... But that's the look. You can you can change the pipes so they go wee off to the side like you're being attacked in the face by some alien. And you can change the intake. And that's about it. You can change the paint. You can change the wheels, but they're never going to match the rear wheels because rear wheels don't change. Unless you... Pick up uh, wheels that look kind of close to that. I think it's the five star ones match it. Not gonna be purchasing this one until I have like nothing going on and a whole bunch of disposable income, but it'll be there. And on that note, not purchasing this one either because yeah, you can you, know, you can get uh, for a limited time. You can unlock uh, exclusive clothing for uh, purchasing this vehicle, but uh, I think it's the the cheerleader massacre shirt or something like that. So for two million, not a wonderful performer by all measures of anything. I can't, can't put that one on the track. They're not even letting that one go on the track for some reason. I can't select that and put it on the track. I don't know why they're doing it that way. But this is good. Okay, so it's not technically road legal or even vaguely safe. But those forks, you'd better get good three-point turns. So they're telling you, this is not a handling monster. But if you can get past all that, you can cruise straight into your goth biker death cult of toys. That's it's it's all about the looks here, folks. So if you're you love this bike, you got two million, and you don't really care about you know perhaps buying the next two million dollar bike, which is a whole lot quicker, but maybe not the fastest. A lot of competing thoughts on that so far. We'll see what happens. Personally, if I was going for something just for the looks that runs a little bit better, I'd go for the big. Oh, that's the three hundred fifty-six thousand. I'd go for the Vortex, but that's just me. On that note, just me is the Black Knight. Have a great night, everybody.